Hello, I'm Mike. This is Will. We are the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And we're bringing you issue 67 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest today. And in this issue, we've got a set of five scouts with sniper rifles. And as always, before we head into the issue, if you want to skip straight to the battle port, there'll be a time code in the description. We're heading in now. First up, we have some background information on company and chapter champions. So you can see here an Ultramarines one. They're sort of, uh, they're kind of like bodyguards for captains. So if the captain gets attacked, these guys will leap in to protect him so he can concentrate on leading the battle battle while they fight off the attacker. We also have a bit here on the Emperor's Champion, who is uh, unique to the Black Templars. Um, he's a little bit different, he kind of has his own rule, extra rule set. And now we have some background here on Sergeant Tellian, who is a uh, Ultramarine's unique character, a bit like uh, Captain Sicarius, who I think we've had in an earlier issue. Uh, Sergeant Tellian here is a Scout Sergeant, as you can see by his armour. Next up, there's some background on the Death Watch, who we have heard mentioned before, but I don't think we've had any uh, sort of concrete background on them. They're a sort of chapter of chapters, so they are made up of members from all the various other Space Marine chapters who volunteer or are sent to the Death Watch, and they work with the Inquisition to fight aliens. As you can see here, there's some fighting the Tyranids. And as we've seen in uh, other faction overviews, we've got a nice showcase of some of their models. So you've got some intercessors and some other regular Marines of various chapters. And here you've got the Corvus Black Star, sort of unique drop ship that the Death Watch use. And this picture here is actually a picture of all the contents of the Stark Collecting Box for the Death Watch. So you get a Dreadnought Captain Artemis, who's a unique character, and two five-man kill teams. Now we have our build guide for the Sniper Scouts, so they're quite similar sort of sprue style to the other Scouts. Yeah, but they do go together much easier, I would have said, because at least the parts fit together, especially around the arms. And you can see each part is sort of has a letter, so it goes with a specific body. And you also have the option here to build a missile launcher instead of a sniper. If you look back at the sprue, you can see you actually get six bodies. So it's actually quite easy to magnetize the missile launcher man, so you can swap him between the missile launcher or just having be another sniper. You can just magnetize him at the waist. Painting all of their armour and uh, fatigues and that sort of thing is uh, basically going to be the same as the other scouts we've had. But the main thing here is painting their camo cloaks. So obviously we need to learn how to paint camouflage. And it gives you some example ones here for uh, urban camo, desert or forest. So obviously you choose whichever one to, which goes with your however you based your models. And here you can see with the wash they actually look quite good. And um, they do make you highlight the cloaks. I mean, I think to make them look really good, you'd probably actually have to highlight each separate colour individually on the fold, because I think these look quite harsh. But uh, they look fine without highlighting, to be honest. But uh, with that over, we'll be going into our mission. And now we move on to our mission for this issue. We've got a bit of background here, Hunters in the Shadows. So apparently the Space Marines have figured out that the Death Guard rely heavily on large numbers of Poxwalkers and Cultists, but if you kill the leaders, then they lack coordination and aren't really effective. So they've been trying to eliminate them with scouts with sniper rifles and so forth. But um, apparently they've lost a lot of scouts doing this. However, uh, recently they have located several Death Guard commanders near the city of Kendris, wherever that is. And the Space Marines have assembled a task force to go and try and take them out. And that's our mission, kill the leaders. And you immediately see the battlefield. The deployment zones are, well, it's, so it's three of our battle mats wide, and each player has a whole battle mat as a deployment with the no man's land in the middle. And to set this up, we roll off and the winner chooses a battle mat, then, then the other one places a battle mat, and then the winner places a third battle mat, and we set up the terrain as we have been doing, with on the blank side. And for this mission, we each have 30 power worth of stuff. The Space Marines must include at least three battle line units, it says, and they have that symbol there. Now, I think they've been playing too much Age of Sigmar because um, that battle line is what it's called in Age of Sigmar. I think what they mean is troops. That's what that means. But anyway, yes, it's those things, which for the Space Marines, incidentally, is scouts and intercessors. And we'll have a look at our new scout data sheet in, in a moment. So they have to have at least three of those units, basically. The Death Guard, on the other hand, have to have at least three characters in their army. And then, as usual, we have three command points each. Deployment is the usual roll-off winner chooses a deployment zone, alternate uh, placing units, and then... But this time, the player who finished setting up first can choose to go first or second, so actually having fewer units is potentially an advantage in this mission. And then the Space Marines, as you might guess, have to eliminate the Death Guard characters. They gain two victory points for each character killed. Uh, the Death Guard, on the other hand, gained two victory points for each of the so-called battle line units eliminated. And then there's also Slay the Warlord for an extra victory point, and the game lasts for five battle rounds. And of course we have uh, an updated data sheet for our scout squad to include the new weapons they get. And yes, up in the top left corner there is the so-called battle line symbol, or troops as it's supposed to be. 
profiles obviously the same, although they do give you the option to have up to 10 scouts, or up to an additional 5 scouts, and it's only plus 4 power for taking all 10 scouts in a single squad, so it'd be 10 for all of them, not another 6. Then the sniper rifles we've got, they are 36 inch range, one shot, heavy weapon, strength 4, no AP, one damage, but if they're all a 6 to wound then it's a mortal wound in addition, and they can target characters even though they're not closer units, you can actually snipe with them, funnily enough. Potentially useful in this mission, we'll see. And there's also the missile launcher, which is uh, the same as the one on Blighthall, where it can shoot frag missiles or crack missiles. And the options, so they've now got the option to take either a heavy bolter or a missile launcher, but not both. And they can take sniper rifles and also camo cloaks, and any model can take those. And I'll... what they do is they give you an extra plus one to your armor saving throw if you're in cover. So it's plus two for being in cover rather than plus one. Uh, but only if the entire unit actually has them. You have to take all of them, basically. Uh, and the other thing to note is they have a rule called combat squads now, so if you have a squad containing 10 models, then before deployment you can split them into two units of five each. Once again, like the last issue, they've forgotten that the Ultramarines get plus one leadership from their Codex Discipline, so the leadership value on this data sheet is actually wrong, it should be eight normal and nine on the sergeant. I'm just having a quick look at the models here, as we said in the introduction, uh, you can magnetise the guy with or one of the snipers to take the missile launcher because it's a separate torso, so... There's the spare torso, so I can literally just take him off at the waist and attach the missile launcher. And there we go. Very easy to sort out. So that's it for our mission information. We're going to have a look at the armies now and then get onto the battlefield, which we'll show you once we fully set it up. We won't show you the deployment process for all that. We'll just show you the finished product. So here is our 30 power worth of Space Marines. What have you gone for? So I have to take three uh, battle line or troops units. So I've got the sniper scouts we got for this issue for six power, then two squads of five intercessors, which are five power each, and then in addition I've got a squad of five hellblasters for eight power, and the primaris captain for six power. And scouts you've given the missile launcher as well? Yep, considering that you're taking the blow drone, and uh, obviously the captain's going to be my warlord, and I'm going to give him storm of fire. And here we have my death guard force that I've chosen. So we've got three characters as per the mission. We've got the Foul Blight Spawn, the Plague Surgeon, and the Noxus Blightbringer. Then behind them we have five Plague Marines, the Fetid Bloat Drone, and ten Poxwalkers. And each of the characters is four power, the Plague Marines are seven, the Bloat Drone is eight, and the Poxwalkers are three, making thirty. And I've gone for the three four power characters because, well, for three reasons. One, because taking Lords of Contagion would be probably a little bit unfair on the Space Marines because they're really hard to get rid of. Um, two, because I guess it's kind of narrative in the sense that uh, they're all support characters ish, not the leaders of the force, so they're not just standing around waiting to be assassinated. And also because only costing four power each, that actually leaves me plenty of power to buy other units. And the Warlord will be the Foul Blight Spawn, and I'm going to give him Tainted Regeneration because hopefully that'll make him really difficult to get rid of. Here we've set up our battlefield, we've got, well, so we rolled off to decide who places what and the mats where and everything, and then we just set up the terrain. So we've got the spaceport board in the middle with Alchemite stack in the middle, and then we've just got, you know the terrain by now, we just spread it around in a pleasing manner. Um, and then, well, just, you know, as usual, the area terrain will be encompassed by the Rise Ruins, so there's one there, one over here, and one down here. So we finished deploying, uh, Michael won the roll-off and decided to deploy, to deploy the Space Marines over here. Um, they also finished deploying first because they've got fewer units. And so they get the choice to go first or second, but let's have a look at the deployment first. So we've got a unit of intercessors close to the camera, and then the scouts who are in range of the ammo boxes as well. Mm -hmm. And then the unit of Hellblasters, and the other unit of intercessors with the captain behind them. And then the Death Guard officer on the other side, we've got a line of ten Poxwalkers here with the Plague Marines and the three characters behind them all in cover because I'm not likely to get the first turn and the characters can actually be shot at by the sniper rifles. And then the Bloat Drone is over here and it is currently in position to be obscured by the um, Alchemite stack in the centre from Scout's point of view, so it might be useful. Uh, but yes, as I said, the Space Marines finished deploying first, so they get the choice of whether to go first or second. Yeah, I'm going to go first. So we will be on to Space Marines, turn one. So there isn't going to be much movement, the only movement is the captain is going to scoot across the back of my lines to get the scouts in range of his storm of fire, or and possibly that, yeah. So yeah, and these intercessors. He picks everyone, because I deployed him poorly. So we'll be on to the shooting phase. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this intercessor squad down here, they're going to shoot at the poxwalkers. We have five shots hitting on threes, you're on ones. We've won that one. Five hits. Wounding on threes. Four wounds. Disgusting who's in it, re-rolling ones, because they are within three inches of the Plague Surgeon. Uh, oh. Good thing. Okay, so it's still only made two, but not bad. And we can just start taking from this end, because they're in the way of the Plague Marines otherwise. 
So now I'll do the other intercessor squad. Uh, the guy just closest to the camera can't actually see any of the foxwalkers. He can only see the bloke drone, so he'll have to shoot at that. But the other four will shoot at the foxwalkers. Four shots against the foxwalkers. We'll be on threes, rolling ones. Three hits. Three hits on the foxwalkers, wounded on threes. One. Disgusting, he was in. Made it. And we've got one shot against the blow drone. Hit you on a three that hits, wound you on a five. Nope. So I'll do the hell blasters next. Fortunately, this man here can't see the blow drone, and then none of them are in range of the plague marines. So this guy will have to shoot at the pox walkers, and the other four will fire at the blow drone. Mm -hmm. So I'll do the, the normal man. He's not going to overcharge. He hit, wounding on a two. He wounded. Uh, one damage, so disgusting, he did it. That's two, so that's a dead pox walker. That one. Then I'll do the sergeant overcharging at the bloke drone, hitting on three rolling ones. He hit, wounds on three, didn't wound, and then the three regular, re rolling that one, until hit, three hits, wounding on threes, three, three wounds. And uh, on my five plus vulnerable save at these, made none of them, so that's potentially six damage. Let's roll up some disgusting resilient. Made two, that's perfectly average, four damage. So that brings it down to six wounds remaining. So the captain is out of range of anything, so I'll just do the scouts next. The four snipers will shoot at the noxious Blightbringer. Yes, because he can shoot characters. And then the missile launcher will shoot at the blow drone. Yep, which you can see, but it is obscured by this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do the missile launcher first, still fire a crack missile at it. So once you're on three rolling ones, that's a hit. Wounds on a three. Three. Yep, strength eight. Oh, yep. I'm going to spend a command point to reroll that. Okay, so down to two. Nope. And that's two hits. And the four snipers hitting on threes, you're on ones. Three hits. Wounding on fives. Whoa! That's three. So that's, <laughs> so that's three wounds plus three mortal wounds. So And a storm of fire, so that's three. Well, it's three, but you've got cover, so it's three, three plus armor saves. Yeah, they're all AP minus one. <laughs> so we'll do the armor saves on those. Uh, I've made two of them at least, so that's one, but that's four wounds going through, yeah. with, including three mortals. So this would be five, three rolling ones, thanks to the plague surgeon. Oh, oh. well, you made three, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So the bike bringing us down to three wounds. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it for Space Marines turn one, so we'll be on to Death Guard turn one. And well, nobody's in range to do anything, so everything will advance. So I'll just roll them all at once. I'll do the Poxwalkers first, because they're in the way of everything, but everybody is within range of the Noxious Blightbringer to roll two dice to pick the highest. So the Poxwalkers will roll a two in total, they're going six. I'll do the Plague Runes next, they go five extra. The Foul Blight Spawn, five extra. The Blightbringer himself, five. Plague Surgeon, oh, five. five as well. <laughs> and finally the Bloat Drone, four. Right, there everybody has moved. The Poxwalker's kind of getting in the way a bit, unfortunately, but the characters are there. The Bloke Drone's come over here, it's full uh, distance, and the still within seven of the Noxious Blightbringer, and the Plague Marines within radio of the ammo box. And I'm going to spend command point for Cloud of Flies on the Plague Marines. So I'll just put that there to remind us, and they can't be shot at unless they're the closest target. But we'll be on to the shooting phase now. The only shooting I have is the Plague Marines. They uh, will shoot at the Hellblasters with the two Blight Launchers. And and as usual, ignoring the penalty for advancing and shooting because we're Death Guard. So, four shots hitting on three, three rolling ones because I have my boxes. So, one, three hits, wounding on three, three rolling ones, two wounds. Five plus armor saves. Made one third one. D3 damage, two, so that kills our master. And I'll take this guy. But that'll be it for my turn because there's no more shooting and no charging. So, we'll be on to Space Marines turn two. So, movement in my only movement in my movement phase will be the Hell Blasters will move, so they're within three inches of that, just in case they might be able to get cover from the Plague Marines. And the Intercessor Squad is going to move across as well, just to make it slightly harder to charge them from the front. And then we'll be on to the shooting phase. So I'll start with the Intercessor Squad closest to the camera. They didn't move, they're going to shoot at the Poxwalkers. So we've got five shots hitting on three, you're on the ones. On the two ones. One, two, four hits. Only on threes. Three wounds. Discussing the resilient fines for rolling ones. That's two so far and re-rolling ones. Yep, that's all of them. I'll do the Hell Blaster squad next. They're all going to shoot at the Bloat Drone. So two of them are in rapid fire range. So, so I'll start with the Sergeant. He has one shot hitting on three rolling ones. He hit. Overcharging. Presumably Overcharging, yeah. yes. Uh, the, other inter the other Hell Blaster at the back has a hit. Hell Blaster in front on the right gets one hit. And Hell Blaster in front on the left, or closest to me, gets two hits. So that's. So we've got five hits, wounding on threes. Four wounds. Five plus invulnerable save. 
made one, so that's six damage again. It has six wounds, so we need to make at least one of these. Made at least one of them, so it's down to one wound. Down to one. So I'll do the captain next. He'll shoot at the bloke drone, because it's probably the only thing in range, and he might kill it. Two shots hitting on twos, you're rolling ones, two hits. Wounding on fives. He got a wound with minus one AP. So that's a four plus, which I failed, and it's two damage. Just yeah. decide if I want to re-roll it. So, uh, yeah, I won't re-roll that, so two disgusting wounds and it rolls. Make one fail one. Potentially might injure the Noxious Blightbringer if it blows up, so we'll roll it. Did blow up. Yeah, it does a one mortal wound. It blows up on a four plus, and it does one mortal wound to both the Noxious Blightbringer and Pox Walkers. Uh, a mortal wound on the Blightbringer on a, five, on a five. Nope, so he takes a wound and a Pox Walker. Doesn't die. Yeah, so he's down to two, and the blow drain is gone. Next up, the Intercessor squad will shoot at the Pox Walkers. So we've got five shots hitting on threes, we're rolling ones, they will hit. Wounding on threes, four wounds. Five plus disgustingly resilient, re rolling ones, made two, so two Pox Walkers go down. Move these two over here. Mm -hmm. and finally, we've got the Scouts. The four snipers will shoot at the Blightbringer again. And yeah. then the uh, missile launcher will fire a frag missile into the box walkers. So yeah. I'll do the frag missile. It's D6 shots. Four. Hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Two. Wounding on threes. One. And five plus. Nope. So another box walker goes down. I'll take this one, I think. And then four sniper shots at the noxious bribringer. Hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Four hits. Wounding on fives. Oh. Blimey, that's that is the best snipers ever. So that's two mortal wounds uh, and AP minus one for storm of fire and two normal armor saves as well. <laughs> He's not in cover anymore, so we did the normal armor saves on three plus. Made both of those. The modified armor saves on four plus, so failed one, and then two mortal wounds as well. So three disgustingly resilient. Five for rolling ones. That's two fours and a two. So he goes down. So that's the end of him, and that is two victory points for the space marines for killing a character. So, yep, that'll be two victory points for the Space Marines as we go into Death Guard turn two. Well, my army's looking a little bit smaller than it was, um, but we're going to advance. We'll start by advancing the Pox Walkers. Unfortunately, the Blightbringer's dead, so I'm stuck with what, I, what this dies. So, there's a four. So, they get themselves to there. I think I'll advance the two characters next. So, do the Foul Blight spawn first. He has an extra five inches, and the Plague Surgeon an extra two. So that brings the two characters to there, and the Plague Marines have moved up behind. A little bit risky sending the Foul Blight Spawn out by himself, but I need him to perform for me, so I need to get him as close as possible, because there's quite a lot of Space Marines left. And once again, we're going to play Cloud of Flies on the Plague Marines to make sure at least I keep my firepower intact. So that puts me down to one command point, and we'll be on to the shooting phase. Uh, the only thing to shoot is the Plague Marines, but they didn't advance, so we'll be everything. Uh, we'll put everything into the Hell Blasters. To start with the Plasma Gun, it's just out of rapid fire range, but we will supercharge it. So one shot, hitting on three, re-rolling ones. That's three, so hit, wounding on a two. Yep. We have a five plus save because of the three inch aura of cover from the servo oh. hauler, and it is closer to the Plague Marines than the, than the Hell Blast, whatever. It's in the way. <laughs> five plus, or six plus, I'm fine. That'll do. So we'll do the two blight launchers next. Four shots hitting on threes, wounding on only ones. Three hits, wounding on threes. Uh, two wounds. Two four plus arm saves. Made one failed one. D3 damage. Two. So another hell blaster dies, take away the sky in the back. Then we've got three shots from bolt guns, because uh, one's in rapid fire, one isn't. On threes, three rolling ones, two hits. Wounding on fours, one. Two plus arm save. Because you're in cover. <laughs> ah, okay. Hell Blast will take a wound. But again, that's it for my turn, so we'll be on to Space Marines turn three. Fair amount of movement for once in my turn. Um, all the Intercessor, well, sorry, the Intercessor Squad, the Hell Blasters, and the Captain are all going to move up normally. Mm -hmm. And the other Intercessor Squad is going to move up behind that box. And if you've been watching since the early days, you're going to do my favourite tactic on the cargo deck, which is to hide behind a corner and charge a Fire Blight Spawn so you don't get overwatched. And then it'll be on to the shooting phase. So I'll start with this squad of intercessors by the box. They're going to shoot at the Poxwalkers. Yep, yeah. this man in front can't see, but the rest can. Yep. So we've got eight shots hitting on threes. Uh, Rerolling ones, probably because of the captain. Rerolling ones. One. Six hits. Wounding on threes. Only four. Disgustingly resilient. Oh, I've made two already, but no ones though. So two Poxwalkers down so far. I'll take these two here, because... And the other Intercessor squad will also shoot at the Poxwalkers, because I need to get them out of the way. So we have ten shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. Seven hits. No ones again. 
Wounding on threes. Six wounds. I mean, they could survive. No. So the Poxwalkers go down. So next I'll do the Hell Blasters. They'll shoot at the Foul Blight Spawn. Because, oh, I could shoot at the Plague Surgeon because characters don't block characters. But I'll it's, shoot the, fly, the Foul Blight Spawn. Yeah. So, Sergeant, two shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. Ooh. Two hits. Wounded Hell Blaster, two hits. An unwounded Hell Blaster, two hits. Six hits, wounding on threes. Ooh, only, only three. Only three. They go straight through his armour though, so it's just six damage. Yeah. Um, so I need to make three five ups here. Ah, I didn't. Oh. You can't regenerate if you're dead. Yeah. So he goes down, and that's two points for killing a character and slay the ward. So that actually puts the space range up to five. There we are. So I'll do these scout snipers next. We have to shoot at the plague surgeon because the there's loads of flies around the, the plague marines. So yeah, there's just this big mass of flies yeah. behind them that for some reason you can't shoot at. So we got four sniper shots and the missile launcher will fire a crack missile. Okay. So I'll do these snipers. Four shots on threes, rolling ones. Three hits. Do it on fives. This is the... This is ridiculous. That is 10 for 10 on wounds and, and a 5 plus. Yeah, and 6 of them being 6s, or no, 7 of yeah. them being 6s. So that's a mortal wound and uh, 2 normal armor saves and an armor save at 4 plus. So 2 normal armor saves, uh, failed 1, a armor save at 4 plus, failed that, so that's 3 wounds going through. Uh, 5 plus resilience re rolling ones, that's 1, so he takes 2 wounds. So he's down to 2. The crack missile, hitting on 3 rolling ones. Hits, wounds on the three, wounds. Yeah, five plus armor save. Nope. D6 damage, one. Oh, I'm gonna spend a command point to reroll that. Yeah. Into three. And five pluses. Uh, yeah, he dies. Wow. So that puts the Space Marines up to seven victory points, which is actually max victory points. You actually, yeah. you actually cannot gain any more. Mm. And you've got the captain to shoot. Yep, and he'll shoot at the Plague Marines now that they're the only unit you have left. He has two shots hitting on twos, rolling ones, they both hit, winning on fives, nothing. So that intercessor squad behind the box is going to declare a charge on the plague marines. Yep, none of whom can see them, yeah. so... So there's no penalty for it's trying. Long, long distance, but it's... So we got, need a, we're going to need something impressive like a ten, no, not a three. No. So that'll be my turn. Yes, so um, we'll be on to Death Guard turn three. And uh, yeah, at that point I will just concede the game because I have five Plague Marines left and I have to kill all three of your troops units and the captain to even effect a draw. To draw. And you've lost two Hellblasters, so you've got all the firepower of the Plague Marines. Uh, yeah, so we'll have a Space Marine victory, seven victory points to zero, and we'll recap all of it for you now. Well, that was the mission from issue 67, Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. Um, and I don't, we don't really know what to say. Yeah, um... <laughs> That went a lot better than I thought it would. Um, yeah, but I mean, specifically the scouts, because we were prepared to say, oh, yes, well, I was gonna have the scouts. I was going to have a whole spiel about how sniper scouts are. They are just not that good, um, especially against Death Guard, because they're strength four and no AP. So, I mean, they have all the problems that bolt guns have, and you really need to rely on sixes for mortal wounds, but then you've still got disgustingly resilient. But apparently none of that applies. Uh, scouts get wounds all the time. 12 shots, 10 hits, 10 wounds. Maybe six mortal wounds in there as well. Yeah. That's astronomically good. Um, how to win games. Roll sixes. Yeah, just roll a lot of sixes and fives. Yeah. Uh, we, well, you did the math and worked out that we're a full squad of five sniper scouts shooting at a Biologus Putrefire equivalent. A, a Death Guard character with a, four wounds. Yeah. You, you basically, on average, you should get less than one wound per shooting. Yeah, it's about, about two thirds of a wound. Yeah. <laughs> Not four. Yeah. I suppose with my army, I feel a little bit like I made some of the wrong choices, like in terms of going up against a space marine gun line, maybe I could have had something else, but it's difficult to know what. I suppose the big choice I made was to take the three uh, cheap four power characters. They're mm. all support characters, so they're living in the blight spawn is pretty powerful, but, but I suppose the main thing I could have done is taken someone like a Lord of Contagion, or indeed the Milligan Playcaster, and psychic powers might have kept stuff like the Poxwalkers alive longer. Yeah, but, but uh, I almost certainly would have focused far on him instead. Yes, oh, because as psychic is also a priority to yeah, indeed. yeah, the big choice would have been taking a Lord of Contagion, who I could have dropped in and potentially caused a lot of havoc. You probably would have struggled to get rid of him. Yeah, I mean, it, if you could have killed off the Hellblasters, then I probably couldn't have actually gotten rid of him. Mm. I might have been able to get him with the missile launcher. But uh, sniper rifles, well, in theory, they should struggle with Death Guard because you're winning on fives. Going to have even more trouble with a two plus armor save on a yeah. Lord of Contagion, and who has even more wounds. Yeah, and to do that, I would have had to drop the Pox Hawkers, but they didn't do anything other than screen anyway. I probably, If I'd done that, I would have had to use the Plague Marine to screen I suppose 
but even then the bloke drone would have might have been closer so I might still have been able to get away with playing Cloud of Flies yeah. on the Plague Marines and also if the bloke drone hadn't died mm. I potentially could have done some damage to your Hellblasters and then charged something and reduced yeah, your you firepower could have tied them up. now that you have a squad of five Hellblasters yeah. they are actually quite we'll good. have to fight the urge to not take them because they are really good um, um, and I, I actually think I played pretty badly in the first turn I should have moved people around. I should have actually checked ranges and things. It yeah. wasn't very efficient. So I thought that I was going to be punished for that, but it worked out in the end. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't really seem to... <laughs> I suppose the other thing is that both of us could have opted to... I mean, I could have opted to stay further back in my deployment zone and mm. make you come to me. You could have done the same. The, the reason I didn't is actually because to get victory points, I had to kill your units. And yeah. you've actually got longer range guns than me. So, But I could, I suppose, technically have hidden the characters in the back and then sent other people forward, but that wouldn't mm. have made a very interesting video. Yeah, I mean, you could quite easily have just hidden a character behind that blue cargo container in your deployment zone, and I probably couldn't actually reach them. I suppose it's another you an option you potentially would have had to be taking the interceptors and dropping them in somewhere to assassinate a character, mm. but they're really expensive. Or um, the other one I considered was the Terminator captain. But um, on the other hand, if he'd failed his charge, I probably would have been able to run away from him because he's really yeah, slow. He would have been stuck. He, he's basically like an order contagion. But the problem with doing all that stuff is, um, I mean, it's half of my power is taken up in the three units I have to take. I know the scouts did really well, but in theory they shouldn't be, do that well at all. So in theory, it's six power that. Yeah, and I, they are yeah. a bit expensive. So I mean. Oh, so all I could fit in was the Hellblasters and the Captain, which apparently is all I needed. But but uh, talking about Cyber Scouts, I really like the models. They really look cool. That said, um, if you wanted to have, say, a squad with bolt guns and camo cloaks, it's a significant effort to actually convert the bolt guns to fit these bodies. It, I mean, you either have to do significant conversion to get them to fit with green stuff and basically re-sculpt arms, or just sculpt camo cloaks. Just make some rolled up ones and put them on the back of the Scouts and that would count as camo cloaks. Going by their stats, they're not really that spectacular. You really are relying on sixes to get the mortal wounds to really do any damage. I mean, generally, you'd probably want to focus on support characters rather than your opponent's warlord. So things like apothecaries, but against other armies like a Tau, some Eldar characters, yeah. you'll be right against them, an Imperial Guard. When you've got things with toughness three rather than five or four, you can probably take them out quite easily. So support characters that bolster your opponent's army, you're probably not going to take out your opponent's wall with them. Although I suppose sometimes it could be worth it. If you have something, you know, even if it's a vehicle or something, if it's on a single wound left oh, yeah, that is a point. you could go fishing for mortal wounds, just shoot yeah. it and hope you roll a six. Just to chip off the last wound on vehicles as well, actually, with sniper rifles. Yeah, so that is a use for them. They're quite good for so something like sitting on an objective as well, yeah. especially if the object if you've got cover nearby. And you yeah. can do concealed positions. So, yeah, because you could set it up somewhere else on the board that isn't in your deployment zone. Yeah, or somewhere high up where they have a decent line yeah. of sight. If, if I was ever forced to take scouts, I'd definitely take sniper scouts. I'm not going to bother with the other scouts anymore. <laughs> they, well, I mean, they've got the camo cloaks, so they've got the, an extra plus one in cover. So they have a two plus armor save against bolt guns and things, which actually makes them fairly durable. Your opponent has to, they actually have to shoot their important guns, so plasma guns and blight launchers in this case, at your scouts to get rid of them. But then that means that they're, they're not shooting at something else that is more important, potentially like hell blasters. And of course, um, because of the way power works, these five with the missile launcher, camo cloak, sniper rifles cost the same amount as, say, the, yeah. the scouts with melee weapons. Well, I think it's mainly the missile launcher that it costs about a third of the unit itself. But it is also handy to have another anti-tank weapon, actually. Yeah. But um, the other kind of the problem with sniper scouts is that they're sniper scouts are kind of overshadowed by eliminators mm. and if you want to see eliminators in action you can check out our second video in our shadow spear narrative campaign but eliminators even though you only get three of them in a unit they have better weapon they their sniper rifles are strength five they have different ammo types so you've got one that lets them shoot at things they can't see one that does multiple damage and one that does multiple hits so they're actually slightly more useful against horde units as well and eliminators can be given las fusils which are can be good against vehicles mm. and eliminators cost pretty much the same amount of power and points I mean they're much more expensive to actually buy the models whereas sniper scouts are much cheaper and they have a different battlefield role but they are kind of overshadowed by them unfortunately which is a shame because they do like the scouts Anyway, I think that's all for this issue. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a like and subscribe and leave any comments you might have. If you've played any of these missions, then let us know how you did. Or if you had any thoughts about scouts or units yeah. in general or whatever, then do let us know. Uh, we've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, bye for now.